Hello, audiophiles of the internet, and welcome once again to Audio 46, your headphone destination. My name is Franco, and today we are looking to permanently clear up some confusion. Electrostatic headphones and planar magnetic headphones. What do they mean? What's the difference? How do they work? Why does it matter? We are going to answer all these questions and more to help you decide which, if either of these, is right for you. So stick around because we're going to get into it right now. Let's talk headphones. All right, now in order to understand any of this, first we need to go over a standard dynamic driver. This is easily the most common type of driver that you will find in different headphones across the market, and it's based on some really reliable technology that was developed like way back in the 1800s. So it's super simple. The essential components here are a magnet, a voice coil, and a diaphragm. The magnet very simply creates a magnetic field. The voice coil, which is just a piece of wire that's coiled up, when it has some signal sent through it or it receives some current, it will react to the magnetic field, which will cause it to move. The voice coil is attached to the diaphragm, which is that cone part that you're probably most used to seeing in a loudspeaker. When the voice coil moves, it causes the diaphragm to move since it is attached, and that big cone that moves back and forth in that oscillating motion disrupts the air around it, and this disruption is what actually produces sound. This is important to understand because this is the essential operating principle of any headphone. A driver that oscillates back and forth and affects the air around it, which thus creates sound. The other types of drivers that we're going to talk about do this exact same thing, but they have different methods and technologies that allow them to do this. In an electrostatic headphone, that diaphragm, aka the part of the driver that is normally the cone in a normal driver, is instead a really thin membrane. I'm talking like thinner than a sheet of paper here. It's really thin. And this sits in between two perforated metal plates, so it's kind of a little sandwich. There's the two metal plates on the outside, and inside you have the super thin diaphragm. This thin diaphragm is locked into space with what we call spars. Just think of little uh, bowling bumpers. It just keeps it from moving too far one way or the other. So it can move freely in between these two metal plates because it's locked in with these spars. Stay with me. Most importantly here, the diaphragm is coated with a thin layer of metal. So it's coated with a thin conductive layer that allows it to hold a constant electrical charge. Now, here's where the real magic happens. Essentially, one of the two perforated metal plates, which are the uh, bread of the sandwich that I mentioned earlier, if you recall, one of these two metal plates will have a charge that is exactly the same electric charge as the diaphragm, and one will have the opposite electric charge. The metal plate that has the same electric charge will push the diaphragm away, while the metal plate that has the opposite electric charge will push the diaphragm toward it. When an audio signal is sent into the headphone, these two metal plates will switch charges very fast, at a very fast rate, causing the membrane on the inside to oscillate, being pushed and pulled by both of them at a very fast rate, like tens of thousands of times per second. This very fast movement of the diaphragm thus affects the air around, which causes the sound. This is how the electrostatic headphones achieve this. Now, there are a lot of benefits to this kind of electrostatic driver over the standard dynamic driver. For one, electrostatic drivers offer very high levels of accuracy and extremely low to non-existent distortion based on the simplicity of the mechanic. Instead of many different physical components stuck together with adhesive, like the voice coil and the magnet and the diaphragm all attached together, this has one very thin component that is moving very efficiently. These are also very fast and very sensitive, which means that the transient response is super tight and super exact. This makes all of your bass and low end very controlled, very reined in, not sloppy at all, super clean. However, as you might imagine, technology like this is very sophisticated and does not come cheap. These are very expensive to produce. You need a lot of power and a special amp to make sure that they play and sound correctly. So overall, these are definitely the least accessible kind of headphones. Electrostatic driver headphones are very expensive and they're just not realistic for most people. Planar magnetic headphones, on the other hand, serve to kind of bridge the gap in a way. The way that they function is very similar to electrostatic headphones, but they also incorporate some of the principles of the regular old dynamic driver. The diaphragm is once again suspended between two different objects, but this time it is in between two oppositely aligned sets of magnets. Now, these oppositely aligned magnets are cut and spaced very precisely on opposite sides so that the driver stays perfectly in place due to the opposite magnetic fields. Two sets of magnets placed together on opposite planes, planar magnetic. When you send signal to your headphones, it will course through that wire that is embedded onto the diaphragm, and that will create another magnetic field, which will react with the magnets on either side, thus causing that undulating motion, which will move the diaphragm back and forth, thus moving the air and creating that sound. 
Now, because the way that these function is very similar to electrostatic headphones, they will have a lot of the same benefits, including the high speed sensitivity and transient response. However, these perform even better in the low end department than the electrostatics do. Because of the superior strength of magnetic force over static electrical force, the diaphragm can move with a lot more power and slam. Planar magnetic headphones also have a much lower impedance than electrostatic ones do, thanks to that embedded wire. It is much easier to send a current into that wire part than it is to create all that standing static electricity that you need to move the diaphragm and the electrostatic headphone driver. So essentially, planers are gonna play a lot nicer with all your listening devices and are not gonna take up nearly as much power. It's also worth mentioning here that the shape of the planar magnetic and the electrostatic drivers offer a big advantage over the traditional cone of the dynamic driver. The cone shape of the dynamic driver produces a much more spherical wave front. Essentially, there was always going to be a little bit of a delay between the air that is being grabbed on the rim of the cone and the air that is being grabbed in the center of the cone. And this small bit of delay causes a very small but discernible distortion. The more even pattern of air displacement, which is caused by these differently shaped drivers, is essentially what is responsible for that higher level of detail, clarity, transient response, and even sound stage. So these are going to be a lot more detailed and have a much cleaner, clearer sound. In terms of a couple different examples of these kind of headphones that are very popular and that I also happen to like myself, the first is a set of planers that I grabbed and this is the Hi-Fi Man Ananda. This is a really nice unit that isn't at too crazy of a price and Hi-Fi Man is a brand that makes some really great planar magnetic headphones. And you can kind of see the hardware if you look through the side, that is the different sets of magnets. These have a great amount of detail, a pretty neutral sound signature and great dynamic performance which makes them very musical and nice to listen to. Next here is an even more affordable planar option. This is the Sigva P2. Sivga is a great company that makes a lot of very cool looking wooden headphones, and these are made of walnut. They have a low impedance of 32 ohms, so they are very easy to drive, even with the pretty huge 96 millimeter driver. These cans are really well balanced, but also have a good rich warmth to them, and the imaging and layering here are really nice. I would say that they are the standout. Finally, for a pair of electrostatics here, I chose to highlight the Stax SRL700 MK2. As you can tell by the name here, these are no joke. This is one of the classic brands and models that many people will turn to when they are ready to level up to electrostatic. They offer sublime levels of detail, almost to an ethereal degree, and the presentation is smooth and just at a really high level that you won't get with many other products. Electrostatic headphones, as I said, are not very realistic for everyone, but if you wanna get that next level sound, then these are undoubtedly going to deliver it. All right, guys, that's it for today. I know that this was all very technical, so I hope that this wasn't too hard to follow as I know that this is a pretty big area of confusion and it is pretty hard to find accessible information about this kind of stuff on the internet. It's either too basic or too complicated. If you feel like you learned something or you got any kind of value out of this, then feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel, leave a comment, and follow us on Instagram over at Audio46. If you want to learn more about these products or any of the others that we sell, then please visit our website at audio46.com. And if you want to get our best sales and deals for the holiday season sent right to your inbox, then consider joining our mailing list. Lastly, if you happen to find yourself in New York City in the coming weeks, then please feel free to visit our brick and mortar store on 46th Street. We take your safety very seriously and you can come here for yourself the difference between these different kinds of drivers and these amazing headphones. Once again, my name is Franco with Audio 46, your headphone destination. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all very soon.